Hey guys, Jonathan here at Shadow Foam, and today we're looking at the Dewalt Tough System 2 and we're looking at this draw box. Now the Tough System 2 is my favorite tool storage system by far. I love it, I love how they clip together, how solid they are, and these drawers are some of the most spacious drawers on the market. And this unit here, with the really deep drawers, I reckon can hold an absolute mountain of stuff if you set them up in the right way. So this unit here is from our big Dewalt stack. Now if you've not seen that, go and check it out here. Over 250,000 people have watched that video and I don't think it's quite as good as we want it to be. So we are upgrading the whole system, maxing it out. We had a load of people commenting, you know, you can fit more tools in there. And I agree, I think we can really improve that system to get the most efficient Dewalt Tough system set up out there, I reckon. Let me know in the comments if you disagree or you've got a more efficient setup. But it starts with this draw system. I reckon we get this dialed in. Right now it's set up for a jigsaw and some packs. And then in the bottom drawer, we had an SDS drill and then a heat gun. So we already had this set up in the system, but today we're gonna use it for what I think this is probably best suited for, which is hand tools. You're always gonna have power tools, obviously, but you're gonna have a degree of hand tools and certain hand tools look the same and you need them set up properly. You need them organized so you can tell the difference, you can grab things dead quickly. So, in this video, we're gonna be organizing trays of hand tools in here and what hand tools are gonna be using? You might remember this set here. This was from a couple of weeks ago where we took one of these Deep Pro organizer boxes and organized a bunch of Dewalt's own hand tools in here. The demolition screwdriver set, their kind of heavy duty plier set, a knife and a tape measure. And we did a really cool battery kit too. So go and check those out. Links up there, links are in the description for everything we're talking about in this video. But the one problem with this kit is it didn't fit everything. I ended up with one lonely Dewalt maximum screwdriver left. And as we all know, that is the most important one because it's the pry bar, right? So that one has got to be included. But that is definitely not enough tools to fill this box. So we need something else, which is where this thing comes in. I picked this up from Costco the other week for 108 quid and it's flipping a beast of a box. It's a 184 piece socket set. It's basically got sockets, spanners, screwdriver bits. And from the looks of things, it's pretty solid. But let's get it open, have a look. Right, so we've got it open, let's have a look. I mean, the first things I would look at, or the first thing I wanna look at are these. These are pretty uh, good telltale sign for me, these socket wrenches. They feel nice and heavy. And that's kind of what I'm looking for, really, when I, when I look at a socket wrench, is just kind of like how many uh, teeth it's got on it. And they seem pretty good and solid, heavy. So I counted these, there are 72 tooth ratchet. And I know that some of the cheaper ones aren't, and you can kind of they feel like there's loads of movement in them and wiggle room. Like this, you click to, to the next gear and it, there's no wiggle in it. So, I mean, that's a pretty good indication of a, of a solid socket wrench. Obviously, you'd have to use it for a bit. I'd have to swing off it, to be honest, to see how well it stood up. But it's heavy as well, so it'd be, give you a right whack. So when I hit you with that, you'd know about it. Spanners look pretty good. I mean, the good thing about these is they do feel like that they would be built for sight. I mean, not chrome, they're obviously plated, they're powder coated. So, you know, you'd have to find out how this powder coating stood up. I mean, it's quite deceptive. They, usually black sockets, I mean, they're impact sockets, doesn't it? It means you can use them with an impact gun and a flexible steel. They're like, they're not gonna be brittle, but these aren't that. These are like a powder coat. They're definitely not impact sockets. So you couldn't use them on an impact gun, but you've got a good mix here. The only thing I'd say that, you know, straight away I had a look at these sockets, quite hard to tell what's quarter inch, what's three eighths and what's a half inch. You've obviously got a quarter inch, three eighths and half inch um, socket wrench and you've got a mixture of sockets here and it is difficult to see what's, I mean you can kind of guess that's quarter but you can't see down them so it's, 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 it's quite, although the mark it's quite difficult and I'd say we can improve this. When we set these inserts up I'll be grouping everything. I'll put the quarter inch sockets with the quarter inch socket wrench. I'll put the quarter inch extension and pieces all together to make sure it's easier to use really because right now it's a bit i would say this is probably a little bit faffy it's a bit of a weird set because it's got a spark plug it's got one spark plug socket in there so you can kind of feel like that when they were making this in the chinese factory they just wanted to fill that gap and they've, they've chucked what this is obviously like it's supposed to be like for a building site really it's all black tools all dewalt you're not going to be fixing your car with this really uh, and then over this side we've got allen keys they're not ball end allen keys but you've got a set of uh, metric ones, you've got a set of imperial ones, 
Then you've got all of these nut spinners here, and these are just your standard, like every cheap set that they're trying to fill up the amount, you know, more and more pieces, they chuck in these cheap bit sets and then these cheap things. This hasn't got a little ridge on it like you'd have if you were putting it in an impact gun. You have got a full bit set, but it just keeps falling out. So not ideal. I mean, if I was getting a set of nut spinners, you want that ridge on there, just hold the buggers in. Pretty good, not bad, is my uh, review this. I think for 110 quid, that is not bad. But I've looked at Halford sets in the past and they're better. We've not reviewed one on the channel though, actually. So if you use Halford's tools, my feeling is that Halford's make a set similar to this and it's better. So let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that. We could pick one of those up and they have a lifetime warranty, which is, kind of says it all really. I reckon we're gonna go for four inserts in this. We're gonna go for two 50s, which is a twin pack of 50 million yellow, and then two 30s, which is a twin pack of 30. These are available on our website, shadowfoam.com. So we do inserts for all of the tough system cases and every other power tool brand as well. We do them in 30 mil and 50 mil, and we do them in all seven colors that we have available. So if you're looking to get your tools organized, this makes it a lot easier. It's gonna make it easier for me today as well, because that way I can lay these out now and I can figure out a layout, and that is the next thing to do. So let's have a look. So that's the layout sorted. 200 tools exactly. And I've made a few changes to my feedback on this tool set. It's a bit of a weird one this. The spanners are missing the most common size really. I mean, what is the most common size spanner in England? 10 mil, right? 10 mil is the most common size spanner. This has got an 11, which I mean, that can go in the bin. Uh, who uses that? 12, I think you use a little bit in pneumatics. 13, obviously you use all the time. 14 pneumatics, 15, I don't know. I don't, I've never used a 15 mil. 17 mil you're gonna use. It's missing a 19 mil, it's missing a 10 mil. So that's flipping hopeless. Half of that flipping spanner set's useless to me. And one of the things I wanted to do was split up the quarter inch, three eighths inch, and half inch socket sets. Because from that case, there were two things quite quickly I realized were a problem, or would be a problem. One of them, it was dead hard to get the sockets out. Some of them were flipping well hard to get out. So the shadow foam should improve that. And the second thing was, it was hard to see which sockets were which. They're all face up like this, so you can't see the writing on the side. And even though they've got the, the writing very small on like the blow molded case, it's kind of in yellow on yellow, you can hardly see it. So I want to lie the sockets down so I can see the engravings, because engravings are fantastic on this. So, and like you see on this metric, they're really big. So you can see exactly. So I'm gonna lie them all down. That's gonna make them easier to get out. It's gonna make them easier to see. And I'm gonna split it all up. So the way I've done that is I've taken all the half inch stuff and put it in this top one. So it's half inch driver, half inch sockets, and then we've put some of the other bulky kind of hand tools. And then we've got the spanners and the Allen keys, which are really thin. I'll sink all of those all the way into that foam. That will be a bottom liner. On this one here, we'll have to cut some finger pulls either side, because that'll be a tray. This will also be a tray, and we'll cut some finger pulls on that, because I think, for me, they, these hand tools are gonna be the most common sizes, the most commonly used. This stuff, you're not gonna need that very often, so it's better to have it, but have it underneath. So this here, we'll cut all of that in, uh, and the way that I've split this up is, everything below that line is 3 8 everything above that line is quarter inch. So that makes it also dead simple. You know, you've got the quarter inch driver with that stuff and you've got the, heart, the three eighths driver with that stuff. So for me, that is a much more logical layout. And then one other thing I'm gonna be doing, because you might look at this and think, bloody hell, 200 tools, that's a lot of cutting. Who wants to spend hours cutting all them sockets in? So usually, and in previous videos, I've cut all the sockets out individually because that's kind of usually how I like it. However, in this video, to show you a simpler, more efficient way, a quicker way, less stressful way, we're gonna group everything in a row. So take this for example, we'll cut a long rectangle and they'll all sit together. We'll split this into chunks rather than individuals. So we end up with a, a much quicker, much more efficient cutting process. And what we'll do is we'll do the base layers first and then I'll cut the hand pulls on the sides of this and get all this cut. So when it comes to cutting shadow foam, it's dead simple. It's just cut around the item, peel back the foam. And to do that, all you need is one of our basic cutting kits. So these basic cutting kits come free with orders over 60 pounds on the website, shadowfoam.com. We do sell them separately as well for 14.99 and they come with everything you're gonna need. So they've got the anti-cut gloves, they've got a scalpel, five blades, 
forceps to put the blades on the scalpel safely. We've got the instructions and a sticker. We also have our pro cutting kits now, so go and check those out. A pro cutting kit has everything the basic cutting kit has, plus it's got some of our foam smoothing spinners. It's got fantastic elastic glue, which is flexible rubber glue. If you make a mistake, you can glue it back in and go again. It's also got a large 18 mil snap off knife for converting cheats now. So we're not gonna use this in this video, but it is available and it also comes free with orders over 120 pounds. So all that being said, I'll get my safety glove on and let's get cutting. And that's it, that was a lot of foam cutting, but I'm really happy with how that's come out. Pretty efficient layouts. They're all looking nice and full. We've got finger pulls on everything. And you may have noticed, this is something I don't do very often. We've added like little grips to the side of these two. So they work as trays. So that's a dead simple technique. That is what I thought would work for a four finger width down the side. So there are two trays. And then the two base layers, we've made sure all of the stuff's cut right down in there so it's flush so the tray can sit on it flat like that and that's basically it same process all the way around place the item where we want it to go cut around it i made sure to take a photograph that is the top tip when it comes to cutting this many items it probably took me 20 minutes half an hour just to get the layout sorted and once i've done that you've got to take a photograph to make sure you you know when you start moving things around you're not going to forget and that is that next thing is let's get it all in the tough system and see how good it looks And that is all done, and I'm well pleased with that. That is a lot of tools in this Tough System drawer unit, all accessible. And obviously when we add this to the big stack, it'll sit in the middle, it's heavy, there's a lot of weight in that, and everything is there. We've got the trays that lift out nice and easily. I've obviously got the screwdrivers on the top, which is the ones you're gonna use more often than not, and then the socket sets below. So that works really, really well, and I'm really pleased with that. So let me know in the comments what you think of this. Have you got one of these drawer units? and would you consider putting trays in them? So hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully that gives you some inspiration how to get your tough system organized. If you wanna see our full tough system and how we organize the whole thing with power tools, check out this video. And if you're keen to see us dial it in even more and get it absolutely perfect, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon because we are gonna be doing a full tough system overhaul and we started with this piece. So if you like this, you're gonna love the rest of it. Thank you very much for watching the video and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like that video, why not check out some of our others? We've got new videos coming out every week. And Colin Furs, what's the quickest way for people to see these videos? That's Subscribe. It.